going to be looking at part one of four of the application of Lorentz equations. Now, I'm sorry that I have to split this into four different parts, but if I made this a full-fledged lecture, then it would be around 40 to 50 minutes, and we definitely don't want that. So, yeah, we have to split this into four, uh, four separate parts for the sake of time. Professor Lawrence's equations are uh, very uh, are very influential, and uh, one time when they are especially needed is when we're looking at intervals. Now we're looking at specific types of intervals where the, these kinds of equations are needed. So now let's look at the first type of scenario in today: uh, the scenario of simultaneity. So. Let's say there's one observer moving, re uh, moving relative to uh, uh, moving relative to a certain map. That person is moving at some relativistic speed near C, so much it could even be estimated as C itself. Now another person is at rest, also observing the map. And then, suddenly, on the map, two activities are signaled. One uh, uh, on this position, and one on this position. Now, you can obviously see they are in different positions. But, this is what matters. For the person moving uh, at the relatively the speed of light, these are simultaneous events. However, for the person who is uh, at rest, uh, the, per the person measures it as unsimultaneous or not simultaneous. This means that for both of them, delta x is definitely not going to be equal to zero. However, uh, delta t uh, is going to be equal to zero for one, but delta t is not going to be equal to zero on that. Now let's call the the one moving prime and the one not moving uh, just the x. So the prime observer uh, observes these observations, and the unprime observer observes these. Now we can use the Lorentz equations to uh, we can use two of Lorentz's most important equations uh, that he formulated over the course of time to improvise these statements and see how uh, that they're actually true and work in correspondence with each other. So now we're going to start with mm, you know the regular basic classic equations. So as a recap from last time, we took we took the uh, Lorentz equations, for specifically these ones. Delta x is uh, is equal to uh, gamma times delta x prime plus v delta t prime, and then we had this, I believe, delta t equal to gamma. And delta t prime plus v over c squared, uh, I believe, the delta x prime, I believe. We can actually plug in the non-zero and zero values in. So now, we know that delta x is not equal to zero, so we can simply leave that. Now, delta x prime is not equal to zero, we've observed. So we can also safely leave that, and gamma is definitely not equal to zero in any sort of situation. So, however, this delta t prime is when things start to get interesting, because delta t prime is equal to zero. So yeah, it's not really interesting. Let's multiply this by a simple zero. So we're going to simplify this later. Now. Um, but for now, we're going to keep that as it is. For now, uh, so here we have the gamma. Then delta t prime is going to be equal to uh, zero. And then we have v over c squared delta x prime, which is not equal to zero. So now we can simplify these. This will simplify 
So delta x is equal to uh, y, no, gamma delta x prime plus uh, delta x prime, which just reduces to this, which is not going to be equal to zero at all, which confirms our observations that, uh, which confirms our observations that delta x is equal, not equal to zero here. Now, uh, we are going to simplify this one here, which will give us uh, delta t is equal to, I don't know, uh, gamma times v over c squared delta x prime. Now, that uh, gives us uh, gamma v delta x prime over c squared which is in no way going to be equal to zero. Although it's probably going to be a little bit close to it considering that c squared on the bottom. So now, uh, now we have these sorts of equations filled out. Now an interesting thing I want to do uh, before we cap off this sort like sort of a lecture you could say that, is what happens if we plug this relativistic speed, maybe uh, the speed of C itself, uh, as, uh, as into this equation. <coughs> By the way, I just want to notify you and put an advertisement up. I made a new medication called the Lorentz equations. It uses the power of science to cure any sort of disease you have. So the, uh, the Lorentz equation only has two uh, rare side effects. A little bit of time dilation and maybe a bit of length contraction as well. But hey, you can't, you can't actually contract those kinds of uh, things. It's uh, only very rare, a one in a million chance I tell you. Anyway, you should buy it. It's only two ninety nine million seven hundred ninety two thousand four hundred fifty seven and dollars and ninety nine cents. You see what I did there, right? <laughs> this is the speed of light. Now, anyways, uh, after you bought this, we can continue on with the lecture. So, uh, about that. We can expand gamma into this horrifying monstrosity. One over, um, what was it? One minus V over C squared. So now, uh, we can actually uh, be at the absolute speed of C. So maybe just like try 98% of C. Why not try that? So 0.98 C is going to look like this. 0.98 squared. So now, um, excuse me, Albert, what's 0.98 squared? 0.98 squared is 0.96. 0.96. Okay. Yeah. So now that simplifies to one over root of 0.96. Sorry for the absurd question, but what is the square root of 0.96? Uh, oh wait, yeah. One minus yeah, one minus point nine six is point four. Point zero two. Mm -hmm. One minus point nine six is point uh, zero four. Right, which, uh, if you take this square root, you get point two. Point zero two? No, just point two. Just point two. After taking this square root. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. One over point two, which gives us if we multiply everything by five. Uh, five. five over one. So yeah, five, five. Sorry. So that gives us about five. And then we have a multiplication of 0 0.98 C times delta X prime. Delta X prime, we can just set to some arbitrary value. Like, hey, uh, you know what? I don't care. So I'm just gonna set it to five. So five is now, Mm. We divide that a monstrosity by c squared, which is not going to be easy to deal with. 
Now, first of all, we can cancel these out to get 5 times uh, 25 times 0 0.98 over C. So now, uh, if I know my multiplication correctly, uh, 100 times 0 0.98 is 98. So a fourth of that is going to be equal to, let's see, um, it's going to be equal to 24.5. So that gives us 24.5 over C. What's 24.5 over 299,792,458 we found? What? 24.5 over C. Yeah, yeah. just C. So 3 is 6. 3, negative 6? No, 3 times 10 to the 6? No, to the 8. Oh, to the 8, sorry. That's mm -hmm. going to be 8.16 8 times 10 to the minus 8. 8.16 times 10 to the... Is that how much the time contract? Or the net no, uh, 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 that's yeah. the... Time contract, uh, time dilation, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's the difference between the time, this is the, the difference between the um, events happening for the observer at rest, but when the, for the observer moving, it's simultaneous. Now, that's probably going to be a pretty short interval. Um, he probably would also say it's simultaneous, considering he probably wouldn't notice 8.16 times 10 to the negative 8 seconds, or more, uh, 8 hundredths of a microsecond. Yeah, he probably would not catch that. Just saying. Now, um, to close off this lecture, next time we're going to go over the next side effect of my new medicine I invented a few months ago, uh, the Lorentz equation. Next time we're going to go over the side effect length contraction. Maybe we shouldn't do it because uh, it's only a very rare side effect, but hey, you always need to prepare for the consequences. Anyways, bye everybody!